All right, thanks a lot. Um, thank you guys for uh, having me here. Uh, it was kind of short notice, I know, but uh, uh, my name is Will Urban. I work at Data Gravity. I'm technical marketing manager. Um, I'm very excited to announce that we just won uh, Tech Target's Best in Show and Best New uh, Product. So that's pretty darn cool. We're very excited about that. Um, so they asked me to come out here and talk a little bit about what we're doing. Uh, you know, we, we basically came out of stealth mode on Tuesday. And here we are at VMworld and kind of showing off what we're doing. So it's, it's pretty exciting. We're doing some really cool stuff. Um, and we're kind of uh, reimagining how storage should be for your environment. Uh, and, you know, it's probably something that you've heard a, a million times, you know, oh, so-and-so has already reimagined storage and so-and-so is already doing something. But we've got some really cool stuff and I'm going to show you it. I'm going to spend most of the time in the screen um, because that's really where the magic is and what we're showing you. But um, just to kind of start the, the discussion, at Data Gravity, we feel that you should get more out of your storage. So traditional storage just stores your stuff, right? And whether you're doing um, you know, uh, software defined or flash optimized or hybrid or in the cloud or whatever, you're still not solving the right problem. All you're doing is just putting your stuff somewhere else, whether it's on a server, whether it's on flash, whether it's in the cloud, whatever. Um, so the, to kind of start the conversation, the Data Gravity Discover series is primary storage. It's a primary storage appliance. It's flash optimized. It's, it's um, unified, so we have SIFs and NFS and SMB, iSCSI, it's all 10 gig. Um, deduplication, compression, all of the stuff you traditionally figure that you need to have as kind of table stakes for your traditional storage appliance. And that's kind of the, the most that I'm going to talk about storage. Um, what we do is we actually allow you, we're calling it data aware storage, but we actually allow you to have insight into your data, allow you to have information about what you're running. So what you can see right here on the screen is our HTML5 uh, web interface. So no Java, no application that you have to download. Uh, it runs you know, in your iPad, it runs in multiple different browsers. Um, and I'm, I'm going to show you a little bit about what the underlying hardware looks like, and then we're going to really talk about what we're doing. So if I open this up and I go into the storage subsystem, you know, it's a traditional storage array. So you have, you know, multiple controllers and high availability and redundancy and uh, hot swappable field parts and uh, email home and performance and analysis and all of the stuff that you would consider, you know, kind of table stakes for your storage. Now, what we're kind of doing that's a little bit different is if you think about traditional storage arrays, whether it's active-active or active-passive, when you do a write or a read and you come into the storage environment, um, all of that information, all of the metadata about the who, the what, the where, the when, all of that information comes in, gets uh, mirrored to the secondary controller for high availability, and then once it's acknowledged to either the storage or the flash or whatever, it goes back out to your application and, and, and pretty much everybody else is done with it at that point in time. What we're doing though is we're actually leveraging the secondary controller we're calling it the intelligence controller, and we actually start doing some data intelligence and some data mining. So we're actually extracting content from over 400 different file types to find out what's actually in your data. We're leveraging this for data protection. We're leveraging this for, uh, for uh, data insider, data awareness inside virtual machines, inside your shares. So it's a very uh, fundamental shift in how you think about what you're going to do with your storage. So let's take a look at that. So if I go to my file analytics page, um, what you see is kind of a heat map about what's going on in your environment. So whether you're using a user share, uh, a home drive, a virtual machine, you know, any of those kinds of things, you can kind of see it here on this screen. And what we're really looking for and we're really looking at is unstructured data. When you think about the explosion of unstructured data in your organization, you know, user-generated PowerPoint presentations and Excel spreadsheets and, and uh, you know, file formats and XML code and all sorts of stuff, we're not really looking at uh, you know, a database mining operation or anything like that. It's really about unstructured user data. When you look at this heat map, I can hover over any one of these shares or virtual machines and get insight into what's going on. So I can see my top users by space consumed, my most active users, dormant data, um, a lot of that information. And this is on a per VM or per share basis. So if I click into the public share, again, I find out more information. Let's take a, uh, take a look and uh, think about dormant data right now. So your primary storage device is used to store data. And over time, you're going to have all this data that's been sitting out there for whoever knows how long. And it's consuming space, and you don't really know what's going on with it. You don't know who's using it. I can actually drill into my dormant data and now have a better understanding of what my data is doing. So for example, this is all the data that hasn't been accessed in the last past nine months. So that's pretty important information. But what's in even cooler is I can actually drill down and find out who owns this information. So because we're in the data stream, I can say, oh, this Wilma lady, she has 550 files that haven't been touched in nine months. So now all of a sudden I can say, oh, 
do I, does she still work at the company? Is she just a hoarder? Like, is she just keeping all this information around? Um, you know, what can I do with this data? I can export all this information, and so now I can start doing some reporting and say, hey, you know what? Uh, for chargeback or showback, you know, Mr. Marketing Manager, uh, this Wilma lady of yours, she's consuming 50% of my storage, and most of it's all junk. It's her MP3 files, it's her, you know, video games, it's whatever she's putting out there. So you can get that kind of insight into what's going on. Um, this allows you to have actionable insights. So now you can either give them to somebody else, delete them, you can offload them. Later on, we're talking about being able to actually put them onto tertiary storage or to archive them or just get rid of them if you don't want them. So in addition to something as simple as uh, dormant data and who owns it, the other thing that we can show you is kind of the, co uh, the, uh, the categories of storage that you have. So over time, we start to notice like what kind of files are you putting on there? Is your intern putting a whole bunch of uh, videos? Uh, is your, you know, uh, your, your home files, is it 90% MP3 files or, or documents or what kind of stuff is actually living out there? In addition, we'll show you file count by category and file distribution. Do you have millions of tiny, tiny files or do you have a whole bunch of just really big files? Now what's important is because we do content extraction and indexing of over 400 different user-defined file types, we start to look for things like uh, IP addresses, email addresses, URLs, social security numbers, credit card numbers. And when you start thinking about PII or personally identifiable, personally identifiable information in your organization, um, some states now are starting to get really, really strict on this stuff. If you're in Florida, uh, the fine for having a social security number sitting in a public share can be upwards of half a million dollars per instance. Uh, in, in Massachusetts, you could actually go to jail if you have some of this information sitting on your storage array. And, and this is very, very hard to show to somebody who's doing compliance and governance. Hey, I've got 17 million files out there. Prove to me you don't have any social security numbers or prove to me you don't have any PII sitting out there. So now because we do this content extraction and we open up these files and start to index them and put stuff that's, uh, we, we understand what's actually in there, we can tag this stuff. So for example, if I go ahead and click on this credit card number, I can show you that, hey, I've got a file sitting out in the public share that has a credit card number uh, attached to it or tagged in it. Now I can find the same level of information inside of a virtual machine as well. So whether you're a virtual machine, whether you're SIFS, whether you're NFS, SMB, we can still do the same level of content indexing. So I have this file called sales team expense accounts, probably something that shouldn't be on my primary storage or in the public share, but let's get a little bit more information about it. I can actually preview and render an image of what this file looks like. And so by looking at it, you can see, yep, I've got credit card numbers sitting out there. I can download this for legal hold and analysis. I can export all of this information for compliance, or I can give it to my CIO or CTO or whoever is important, you know, whoever is concerned about making sure that we don't have that kind of information. You know, when you think about what happened to Target or to Michaels or any of those companies that have customer information that got leaked or easily accessible, this is some very important stuff. Now, in addition to being able to see who owns that file, it's owned by Marion, by clicking on the file, because we own the entire data structure and we, into into we own the entire life the lifespan of this file, I can tell you every single person in your organization that's had access with this file. So when we start talking about risk assessment, oh, I think I lost the, lost the battery. Can you hear me now? I think the battery died. Battery? Oh, there we go. Ooh, somebody's hitting the wrong buttons over here. They're like, ah, oh, we're tired of hearing this guy talk. But so if you look, you can show you every single person in your organization that's touched this file. So now not only have we shown you, hey, you've got a social security number sitting in a place that it shouldn't be, but here's every single person in your organization that's had any sort of access or contact with this, whether they've read it, whether they've updated it, whether they've made changes to it, and you can export all this information. Now it may be that, yes, these are all people in the finance uh, department and they all have perfectly legitimate reasons for touching this, but at least you can kind of get this information. Because we do data protection, which is kind of similar to a, uh, it's a like a snapshot, but it's a little bit more intelligent, we can actually show you the change rate or the differences between when someone updated it. So I can see this Henry person, I can say, okay, well he updated it on Thursday, what's the difference between when Henry updated it and when Wilma updated it? We can show you that information. And in fact, if I go into the recent activities, now I have a full audit tracking of all of the information for this particular file. So I can filter by users. You know, we got this Will guy, he's kind of a troublemaker. You know, he's read the file three times and this is when he's read it. So now we have full auditing capabilities for every single file in your organization. So if you think about something like uh, my CIO is under uh, some sort of legal hold or legal audit, I can tell you every single file he's touched, read, or updated in your entire organization from day one to day now 
um, or over the last month or whatever. And I can also tell you this information inside of a virtual machine as well. So not only can we do auditing, but we can also do search and discovery. So for example, let's say because we do content indexing, let's say I'm looking for something important. Uh, maybe in my organization, I want to know if there's anything that has classified inside the content. Now this is more than just looking for file names that have classified. We're talking about content, content within content of something that has uh, classified inside of it. Or, or maybe you've got a PowerPoint presentation that has confidential or for your eyes only or any of that sort of information. So here we go. I, I'm able to find that on that public share, I've got 41 matches for something that has classified. And once again, you know, Department of National Defense PDF. I can tell you who owns it. I can preview it. I can download it for legal hold. I can tell you every single person that's touched that. So all of that sort of governance and compliance sort of stuff that nobody has right now because it's too expensive, it's too costly, we now kind of provide that as, as part of the Data Gravity Discovery Series. Now in addition to something like PII, discovery, and all of that stuff, we also want to show you the ability to, tech, to kind of get more information out of your storage um, and more information out of the data that you own kind of in a positive light. So for example, um, the end user also has a way that they can log into the storage and see access um, and, and access the stuff that they have um, available to them. So for example, I logged in as this Charlie guy, and he has access to his home drive, obviously, the public drive and the marketing drive, but he can actually do the same sort of content level search and discovery that you can do as an admin. So for example, he's getting ready for VMworld, and he wants to know everything about VMware that's out on the marketing share. Maybe he's getting ready to do some presentations. He wants to find out any sort of information he can find. So now, again, content-based discovery. So he's found 77 files that have VMware in them in some sort of content. But more importantly, not only can he figure out who owns it, but if I go to the experience view, I can see who's responsible for this content in my organization. So now you can start to see, oh, you know what, this Alfred guy, he's got 34 of these contributions of these types of files. So maybe he's a subject matter expert in VMware in my marketing organization. So maybe I go have a conversation with him. You can imagine if you're a school district and you have something like uh, a teacher in one high school is uh, creating a presentation on Christopher Columbus and she does a search and she finds all of the content on Christopher Columbus throughout the entire school district, but can also find that there are other teachers out there who are working on similar content. And now all of a sudden you start to have this better together uh, co coordination and collaboration story working with these experts. And in fact, I can actually click on collaborators and you can actually see who's actually working with who. By hovering over somebody's name, I can see who they're working with in the organization, who are the subject matter experts, and kind of understand better about who the data flow is and who the data owners are. And again, just giving you more information about the data that's inside your environment. Now, in addition to that, we do the data protection. So if you think about what we're talking about, we're talking about primary storage that has layered on top of it governance, search and discovery, PII information, auditing, tracking, but then we also have data protection. So there's got compression and deduplication and, and all of that stuff. But when you think about data protection, the way we do it is it's kind of like an intelligence snapshot with some additional features on top of it. When you think about what, an, uh, what a snapshot is, right? A snapshot is just a point in time copy of what the data is on your either uh, your iSCSI volume or your NFS share or your SIF share or anything like that. But really all it does is it just says that I have track of everything that's changed from time A to time B. What we're doing is we're doing a little bit more than that. So not only do we know what's changed between time A and time B, but we actually context, content index it and we catalog it. So now instead of saying, all right, I know everything that's changed between these last two hours, but now I have to find what's changed or do some differentials or go looking for it, we actually give you that list. We actually give you a catalog and it's searchable and it's part of that content indexing. So uh, as just a kind of a cheesy little demo, we're going to show you how we can do that inside of a virtual machine. So I have this file right here. This is a PDF file. I'm going to go ahead and just delete it. And let's see here. Oh, it's a Mac without a right click. Come on. <laughs> there we go. Two fingers. These Mac people, I tell you. So <laughs> I just deleted the file. Um, I'm going to go in and I'm going to show you if I go into my storage and I go into my virtual machines. So the VMs are VMware aware. So we talk to vSphere, we put them into hypervisor consistent snapshot mode, then we take our data protection discovery point, we extract out the content. Now what's really cool about this is we have, like I said before, we've got our controller, our primary controller which serves I.O. and then we have the intelligence controller. So the intelligence controller that's doing all the content extraction and breaking open the VMDKs and reading all the files and indexing them and looking for PII, all of that's being done 
not on your primary data. So we don't impact your primary uh, I.O. stream. We don't impact your primary performance. So I'm sitting on this admin N1 virtual machine. I'm going to go into him. Now, one of the things you can see is on a per VM basis, you can see the per VM performance at the hardware. You can see most active users. You can see discovery points that are cataloged for looking for stuff. I'm going to go ahead and extract this out. And so for the lifetime of this file, there have been 465,000 activities, reads, writes, updates, any of that stuff. So I'm not going to search through all that, but I can actually go into my discovery points or my deleted files and find the file that I deleted. So I know it's a PDF. I'm just going to go ahead and go into here, go start up PDF, find that PDF, look for it. And here you can see I've been doing this demo the whole VMware uh, world. So I've got a bunch of versions of it. I'm going to go ahead and just click on this guy right here and click on restore and say yes. And I've got to log into the virtual machine. So now let's think about how we would do this with traditional storage. You would take a snapshot, you'd clone the snapshot, you bring it online, you'd rescan the HBAs, you'd browse the data store, you'd find the VMDK, you'd add the VMDK to your virtual machine, you'd open up the VMDK, then you'd try to find the file that you were actually looking for, then you'd find it, you'd copy it back, and then you'd clean up the whole environment. So we're able actually to restore uh, files inside your file shares or your virtual machines while they're running. So if I just minimize this, I know it's a cheesy little demo, but it shows the power of what we can do with a running virtual machine or a user share. And again, the end users can do this as well. So instead of having to call the help desk and say, hey, I've deleted that PowerPoint presentation or I don't know which one of these PowerPoint presentations I want, the end user can go ahead and do self-restore as well. So again, the, the whole idea is we're changing fundamentally how primary storage works. Now, if you think about all of the things we're talking about, we're talking about primary storage, flash optimize, hybrid, deduplication, compression, all of that stuff. That's kind of table stakes. We're talking about governance and compliance. We're talking about audit tracking and audit trailing. We're talking about search and discovery, and we're talking about database uh, data protection. We're coming to market with this. We just in we came out of stealth mode on Tuesday, so uh, everyone's all excited about that. We, like I said earlier at the very beginning, we won best in show so far from Tech Target. Um, we're coming to market with this at the price of primary storage. So all of these features that you could expect to spend a really large amount of money on, we're coming to market with two products out of the gate, 48 terabytes and 96 terabytes, between 50 and 100K. So when you start to think about what your primary storage is offering you today, what we're saying is that you deserve more out of your primary storage. You, you deserve to understand what's actually in there and not just have a place to store it. Now, I know that's a whole lot of marketing crap, but really the, the reality of it is in two or three years, you're going to start to see that storage has to evolve to be more than just a place to store your data. Oh, five minutes. Okay. I thought he was waving to me or something. I had a question. <laughs> um, but no, actually, that's really good. So um, I'll actually open it up for quick questions because we're pretty much done with the actual presentation. Come by our booth. Um, I can't remember my booth number, which is absolutely terrible, but there's a big data gravity sign on there. What are we? 1647. Thank you, Andy. Um, So that's a very good question. So the question was, you can see reads, writes, and updates. Can you see if they downloaded a local copy? So because uh, we can see the reads, we also track activities. So if all of a sudden somebody uh, named uh, Dennis uh, gives his notice, and then all of a sudden you see that his user share has 4,000 read activities, while we can't tell you where it's going, we can tell you that that activity has happened and actually track that stuff. So you can see a lot of that information. So it's evolved in the metadata about access to the main storage and so forth. Mm -hmm. Good, good question. So the question was, we keep track of all this metadata. How long is that information stored? And how much uh, of the space is it actually consuming? And so when we talk about the, the way the data gravity uh, system is set up is it's, it's two fault isolated data pools. We have a primary pool and we have an intelligence pool. So out of the gate, we, it comes with 24 drives. And six of them are allocated to primary and six of them are allocated to intelligence. And then they're going to dynamically grow and shrink based upon your usage. So if you're doing data protection and you want to keep uh, the deltas every hour for a year, obviously your intelligence pool is going to start to grow much, f much faster and much more than your primary pool. Um, the, the amount of metadata itself, we also have solid state disks. So the solid state disks are triple mirrored um, and we've got a whole bunch of stuff going on up there. So the metadata themselves isn't what's going to consume the space. It's going to be the delta changes and how often you want to keep them. So it really, basically we're replacing snapshots. So the same amount of space that you would conserve for your, consume for your snapshots, we're going to consume about the same amount of space. It's just going to be on a different fault isolated disk because that's the disks that we open up and do all the content extraction for. So 
Um, so I can only answer some of that. <laughs> so the, um, you know, it's the, each of the different uh, fault isolated pools are RAID 6, it's a, but it's a custom RAID 6 that's been written. The, 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 triple, the triple mirrored on the SSD is also our own RAID that we've written. Um, and then we, we offer the whole thing up either via SIFS, NFS, SMB, or iSCSI volume. So it's all 10 gig from the front. Did I answer that question? Um, mainly because it couldn't do what we wanted it to do. So, so why not what do you mean extend them? Um, I'll defer that because I, I don't know how much of it has been leveraged. I mean, there, there could have been some that was leveraged or no, and that's, then that's fine. No. <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thank you guys very much for having me. I know it was a short time, but again, this was very pleasurable. Come see us at the booth, and uh, we're really excited to be here.